Oh, but it is the power of God to those who are being saved. It is the power of God to those who are being redeemed. To such as keep His covenant. Oh, the Bible says all the ways of God are mercy and truth. To such as keep His covenant. Oh, but to the homosexuals, but to the sodomites, but to the porn watchers, but to all those who smoke their cigarettes and drink their beers. Oh, there's nothing but destruction waiting. Nothing but hell waiting. So everybody, all those people, yes. Never I repented of my drinking. Never drank I told you I repented. I turned away from my sin. Is everybody, is everybody living in sin? I told you I repented of that. I'm married. Look, man, I've, bro I've broken every law. It's a yes or no. So, everybody's sin. So is everybody going to hell? No, I'm telling you, is everyone, do you think everyone's going to hell? No. Well, then what's the difference if everybody's sin? What's the difference? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but all will continue in sin. Is this your excuse why you're in continuing sin? I'm going to sin. You have to do it. Well, you should. Well, You'll end up in hell. Your Judaism is not going to save you on the day when God judges you and you're found without Christ. Don't yeah, without Christ, you're lost. I'm lost? Okay. Yeah, you're an unbeliever. You've been plucked out of the tree, the Bible says. But God can graft you back in. Why won't you be grafted back in? No, because you because you deny the plan for God. I do. Yes, and you're not you're not. Are you sacrificing bulls and goats for your sins? Then then what are you? What kind of Jew are you? <laughs> look, look. Jesus is the sacrifice. He is that pure bull and that pure lamb. It says that was slain before the foundation of the world. You make a case for sin. You're not a Jew. How can you be a Jew? The Bible says a Jew is not outwardly, is one inwardly. Circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. Whose praise is not from men, but from God. I'm concerned for you. You know better. And then you come up to me and, and try to act like I'm in sin. How do you know my life? How do you know my life? You do this every day. I do what every day? Preach. I do. I preach the gospel to every creature. Right. And I live the gospel. I live the life I profess to you with God's help. I don't do it on my own. But right now, you're... You, you do it on your own. What? You do it on your own. How do I do it on my own? You choose to do it every single day of your life. But I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't choose to give myself wisdom and knowledge. God imparts that to me. God, Im gives, God gives righteousness. God gave you wisdom? Yes, he did. Really? He taught me. No man taught me this. The word of God, he brought to my... This, the Bible says that God... Yeah, I, I've heard the voice of the Lord. I've heard the voice of the Lord. And he, when he spoke to me in a vision, he was like a light above me. I couldn't see him. The Bible says no man has seen God. He would be destroyed if you would see God the Father. But it says we see Jesus. And that's who you're not dealing with. You're not. Yeah, you won't. Why won't? You're in your sins. No one else died for sins but Jesus. People die every day in the fucking army, dude. What are you talking about? No one else died for sins. No one else can pay the penalty. Yeah, but no one can die for sins. No, they can't. They won't die in their country. What good is that going to do us on the day when you stand before God and give an account for your sins? Nothing. You going to say that you're going to say that some guy in Afghanistan is the one is the reason why you should be let into heaven because he died for our country? What good is that going to be when you stand before God? You got to give an account for every idle word. Oh, you can walk away. You're walking away from God. Your con your conviction. You know you need Jesus. I'm not tired. Yes, you do. No, God strengthens me. You should be tired of your cigarette smoking. That. That's what's going to bring you tired. It's going to bring you down. You're going to feel weak, not just fleshly, in your spirit. You I'm a Christian. No, you're not. Christians don't smoke, okay? Seriously. Yes, seriously. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says that if anybody defiles the temple of God, God will destroy that person. For that temple is holy. You've been, you've been, you've been deceived, man. You're believing the lie. You think you can live this way? You think, and that's just one thing. I mean, that's just evident. You don't smoke? Of course not. Well, you act like everybody smokes? All Christians should smoke? A lot of them. Well, they're not Christians. They know, Jesus said you'll know them by their fruits. I go to church. What good is that? So you get saved by going to church every week? Is that what God said for you to do? I don't know. Probably. No, the Bible says you have to repent. You're not repenting right now. You shouldn't fear God. You need to understand that, that the Bible says that you were bought with a price. Your body it was purchased by God. Therefore, it says you need to honor God with your body and your spirit, which are His, 1 Corinthians 6. Because if, like I said, if you did continue to defile your temple, God's going to destroy you. That's not the plan of salvation. Destruction is not the, 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 the way of the righteous. The way of the righteous is life, peace, joy, 
Redemption, goodness, peace, and, and, and just love. The Bible says God hates all workers of iniquity. You, you, you go to these canvas crusades and you, you go to all these churches that don't preach the whole truth to you, man. But I tell you the truth, that God wants to forgive you, but you need to go, you need to go back to the beginning. You need to go back to the cross. Wow. The Bible says, Jesus said, unless a man first count the cost, he cannot begin to build. If, though, it says that he count the cost, he will not get halfway through construction and run out of money. But he'll be able to finish what he started. In God, it says that he finishes the work he starts in us. So you won't be alone. God wants to help you finish the work. But you have to understand what that work is. The work is holiness. It says that whom he foreknew, he predestined that we might be conformed to the image of his son. That's Romans 8, 28. The whole purpose is that you would be just like Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with an anointing, filled with the wisdom of God, filled with righteousness, that you would know that, man, I can't live unrighteously. I can't continue in sin. But it, as long as you say you're a Christian right now, it's okay for you to live this way, you're deceived. You must humble yourself and say, God, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I have sinned against heaven and against you, Lord. Please, God, forgive me. Wash me clean. Graft me back in. you got to come low before God. You know what God does? He gives grace to the humble. He gives power to those who are on low. That's what He did to me. When I was in my sins, I was in terrible sins. Pornography, uh, marijuana smoking, cigarettes, drunkenness, partying, lying, stealing. And when God convicted me, I came before His, His throne and I just said, God, please, Take your judgment off of me. Please, not only just pay the penalty for my sin, but release me from the power of my sin. You need to be released from the power of that sin. If you're still in their sins, the, your, your penalty is not covered. What are you going to do, man? You have a Bible? You going to read it? You, you going to see with what I'm saying is true? I quote you the Bible. You know? Do you feel the conviction? Kind of. Kind of? Well, do you understand that I love you and care for you and that's why I tell you these things? Well, it's all I can do, man. Some plant and some water, but God gives the increase. You need I'll, the increase. I'll give a thought. You need to quickly. Today is the day of salvation. I promise another. Care for you. Oh, I tell you, are you... The Bible says, come now and Consider. Consider. The Lord sets before you life and death. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. I will walk within my house in a perfect way. I will behave wisely with a perfect heart. O oh Lord, when will you come to me? I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of them that fall away. It shall not cling to me, David said. Early, he said, I will destroy the wicked. Early, I will destroy the wicked and root out all the unbelievers from the land. David was a Jew. Oh, but he was a born-again Jew. You're, you got a cursed. You're a cursed Jew. But you can have the blessing. You can be forgiven. I don't want you to be accursed. You know, the Bible says that these people, it says that they have departed from the truth. They are accursed children. They have forsaken... What's that? Say what one more time? That you cursed me? If you want to curse, then that's what's inside of you, a cursing. And that's what the Bible says, says these children are accursed children. The Bible's calling you that, not me. And you confirm it with your middle finger. You confirm it with your speech. But God can clean you up. Lord, forgive this man. He was born a Jew naturally. He needs to be born a Jew spiritually. Forgive him, for he knows not what he did. You know, Jesus came to his own, the Bible says, and his own did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, he gave the right to become the children of God. Oh, it says to those who were not born of the will of man, nor of the flesh, nor of blood, but they were born of the will of God from heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 3, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Oh, if you're led by the spirit of God, you wouldn't be led into sin. You wouldn't be going to these parties you're going to. You wouldn't be smoking marijuana, drinking beer, getting drunk. You wouldn't be doing that. You wouldn't be living for Michigan State football. You wouldn't be living for those things. I'm not saying you can't watch a football game, but you know the idolatry behind it. You know it consumes your heart. 
You know that those things are the focus of your attention, your affection, your focus. Yet the Bible says that you're to seek diligently the Lord with all your heart. Then you'll be found of you. For God will not have a part of you. God will not have 90, 99% of you. He will only have all of your heart. Oh, it says these people, they go astray seeking after other gods. Yet God is the God of salvation. And to Him alone belongs escapes from death. But God will wound the head of His enemies and the hairy crowns of those who continue on in their sins. Psalm 60, 68 says, Oh, but it says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. For He daily loads me with benefits. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice exceedingly before God. Oh, it says, because, because God, He rides on His name is Yah. He rides on the clouds. Let the Lord of God arise. Let His enemies be scattered. Oh, let those who hate the Lord flee before His presence. As smoke is driven away, so let the wicked be driven away. As wax melts before the fire, so the wicked perish at the presence of God. I tell you, if you're living in wickedness and in sin, when you come before God, you'll perish at the presence of God like a wax, like a candle that had a 150 degree flame. Just take it over and wipe it out and melt it away. Don't be melted away before God. Oh, but break your heart now. Cry out to God now. He has the answer for you. He has your pl a way for you, a plan for you, your life. He can bring you into rivers of living waters, bring you into His presence. The Bible says, in His presence is fullness of joy, and at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. David said, because I have set the Lord always before me, because He's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my flesh will rest in hope, and my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. I rejoice before God. I am one before you who knows the goodness of God in the land of the living. Oh, the Bible says, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would have soon settled in silence. Oh, if I say my foot slips, oh Lord, your hand upholds me. In the multitude of my anxieties, your comforts delight my soul. Oh, but it says, it says, shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? There they gather against the life of the righteous and they condemn innocent blood. But God has been my help. He has been my refuge. And the Lord has been my defense, Psalms 94 says. And earlier in that chapter it says, Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand for me against the workers of iniquity? Oh, the Christians are not friends with the world. The Christians are not in... In, in communion or in covenant with the world. I don't come here with good tidings for you unless you're willing to repent, unless you're willing to come out of these evil things that you're doing. I tell you if, you, if you don't seek the Lord, you reject the plan of God for your life. You think you can do it on your own strength. You think you can do it without God's word, without God's love, without God's mercy, without God's truth. You know, the Bible says that God is full of, Jesus is full of grace and truth. Not just grace, but He's full of grace and truth. 